I, I wanted to w- welcome Brian Clement for. Uh, hey, Brian. Glad you made it. <laughs> so just just to fill you in, we were discussing um, diabetes and fat versus sugar, and one of the things that Dr. Cousins just raised was um, the role of fructose. Now he was talking about how fructose was uh, introduced. I guess as a as an ingredient outside of fruit, but I know that you're not a big fan of fruit, if I'm correct. Can you speak to why you think fruit is is um, not something that that um, people concerned with their health should be eating? Well, you have to understand that uh, we've all been intentionally confused by the food industry. Uh, the man that they had on their payroll fifty years, maybe sixty years ago, was Doctor Steer out of Harvard. He was a nutritional scientist there. And he was the guy pretty much instrumental in getting us to talk about fats as saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and that there were good sugars and bad sugars. And Liskin out out in Stanford also amplified that. But the reality of the whole thing is when you say fruit sugar or fructose is bad, it's the same exact fruit sugar that you find in mangoes. And the same exact that you find in a peach or in a date. So, you know, it's hard for me when people claim to be scientifically based and then they talk nonsense from the first sentence that they come up with. And we sort of backed into this whole thing. I didn't like uh, have some secret way to figure out that fruit was bad for you. I was watching cancers grow and cancers remiss when we remove fruit sugar. And it was a very hard haul because 42 years ago, when we moved sugar out of the diet, fruit sugar out of the diet and fruits for people initially with cancer and then with viral diseases, microbial diseases. And I would go out and speak about this, especially in academic settings. They almost booed me off the stage. Uh, and, And today it's unfortunate. It's 42, 43 years later. And the same nonsense is happening because nobody seems to keep up with the data. And the data is clear. Uh, I was stunned as to how bad fruit sugar was in the conquest of cancer from one of our colleagues, uh, Gabriel knows him too, uh, Thomas Seifrey, who's been on The Real Truth. And Thomas came here, we, we hold little conferences with what I call cutting edge renegade scientists. So whenever I gather a group of five to 10 really advanced thinkers, I know that they're all being beaten up in the world. So we have a big commune party here and we do three day conferences. And he came to that party six years ago and he sat here in our major hall, Wigmore Hall, uh, named after our founder and showed me on a piece of paper that fruit sugar feeds cancer more than glucose, dextrose, sucrose, et cetera. And I said, why? And you know, I should have known this because 40 years before that or 30 some years before that we pulled it out. He said, if you go back to the way it metabolizes, that means digest through the human system, it's the only sugar that digests like a fat, a lipid. And in the process of uh, providing the cancer cells and the viruses and the bacteria exactly what they want, that's their fuel. And anyone that doubts that uh, really doesn't know uh, cancer because every cancer cell has 80 times more receptor sites. Receptor sites for the public out there mean mouths. So they have 80 mouths that want sugar more than a normal healthy cell. And viruses, I forget the number, and back dif- different bacteria, but their fuel is that. And now when you reduce oxygen by metabolizing or digesting or breaking down the, the sh- fruit sugar, and you also now feed it what it wants, Uh, It goes back to what we learned 100 years ago, that we literally have lower amounts of oxygen. We precipitate the genetic switch on for cancer cells, as once again was repeated a few years ago. And my newest book speaks about this research that came out less than a year ago on this. And that's it. It's not we're against fruit. As a matter of fact, ironically, I think fruit was the original diet of human beings. There's no doubt in my mind that, that it's a perfect food. You know, when you look at it, it falls from a tree, a bush, a plant, and you pick it up after it's ripe and you eat it. But man messed with fruit just like we've messed with everything else. 
And when I finally got away from medicine and doctors and research and talked to agricultural scientists that their expertise is fruit cultivation, that's where I got the real answer. And they said to me, do you realize that the fruit today doesn't even vaguely resemble the original fruit? 85% of the fruit was cultivated by the Chinese. And when did it start? Hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And, you know, uh, to make this super easy for everyone to, to understand, uh, when I was speaking to one professor from University of California, he said to me, do you like crab apples? And not at all. If any of you have ever had the displeasure to, to bite a new crab apple, you pucker. Oh, <laughs> it's a, there's no sweet. You completely... And he said, a crab apple has more sugar than the original apple. Wow. And when I, I got that, I said, oh, my God. Inversely, he said to me, uh, what's your favorite apple? Don't you know it was the sweetest one out there, a red delicious apple. And he said, well, that was cultivated over since the 20th century. We did that. So, you know, I know a lot of people listening. You're just attempting to come off animal based foods and and uh, hopefully lessen the amount of cooked foods and get onto organic foods. And when people like Gabriel and I, who have more than a combined hundred years of work in this, and we're relentless, you may hear us say wildly different things in six months than we're saying now, because we follow science. I'm not interested in what I said a year ago, because if I keep repeating and regurgitating what I knew before, you know I'm not learning. And you shouldn't be in listening to a word I say if I'm not learning and growing and developing. And we may have been some of the original people, Gabriel and, and Hippocrates, his center, that we discourage fruit consumption. But now the science is in. So that chapter is finished. Now let's go and learn other things about other, other areas. So as far as new, like new, you know, people who are just coming to plant-based, yeah. compared to what they're currently eating, you know, if fruit gets them to, to be more successful being plant-based as opposed to eating a hamburger or, or going and eating maybe places dessert, eating ice cream, would yeah. you say that's a great first step? Go eat all the fruit you want. <laughs>